Hello and welcome to Attention Central Texas. I'm your host, Charles Jenkins, and in the studio with me we have Miss Kim White, who's the founder, director, CEO, all of that good <laughs> stuff for the 411 House, and we have Mr. Michael Carpenter. He's a volunteer mentor. Hello, guys, and welcome to today's show. Thank you. Kim, let's just start with you. Tell us, how did the idea come about, about the 411 House, and how did you guys get started? So we started going to East Temple about eight years ago. Um, we were connected with an apartment complex over there called Wayman Manor, and we knew some families there, and um, so we kind of decided to just dive into that community. And we started doing um, like after school pizza and drinks with the kids, just as a way to like get to know them and um, play games and have fun. And um, just through that experience, we did, we got to know a lot of kids and a lot of families really well. And um, just through that, we saw um, kids that we loved to death, that were such good kids. Um, but we did see a couple of them start to take a different path than, you know, that, than they had wanted. And we just thought, this is so, you know, we know these kids, they're amazing. Um, and kind of just seeing what some of their needs were. Mm -hmm. And um, we really felt like it went back to having a place to belong. Mm -hmm. um, we just saw that, you know, if you got in trouble or did certain things, all of a sudden you were kicked out of everything. Mm -hmm. You know, you had nothing. And so I was kind of like, well, what are they supposed to do now? I, like, I don't even know. Um, and so we just felt like we wanted to create a place for them to belong. Um, and, it, and for kids that are, you know, maybe on that path or for kids that are also, you know, on a good path, it's kind of for everybody. Um, but just a place that says, we're here for you and we care about you and um, bringing people into that place as well. When so, did you officially open? So we opened the doors this past April. All right. We had been under construction for a while. So. How has the community responded? Um, they have been amazing. I mean, from the very first few months after we um, bought the house, we you know, received a big grant from Chip and Joanna Gaines um, to complete the construction and demolition of the house. And then from there, the community just pitched in. I mean, we had people offering a new roof, a whole new electric you know, lighting and just everything. So the community has been amazing with the building of the house. And then now that we've been open to, it's pretty much you know, any need that we put out there, I feel like the community just instantly steps up and, and wants to help us out. And speaking of needs, Michael, what, uh, what are some of the needs of the 411 house? Yeah, so the 401 house um, really um, gives the boys the opportunity um, to experience some things they normally wouldn't. Um, and so they get to, um, you know, they get to have, spend time with mentors and volunteers who actually care about them, you know, uh, men in the community who, who want to see them be the best they can be. And then also, um, you know, we do fun stuff for them. And so we bring in, like tonight, we're bringing in some producers, some music producers, and so they're going to uh -huh. get to make a song, you know. And so a couple weeks ago, we had spray paint artists. And so well, we're giving them opportunities to, like, channel their energy and, and, and have opportunities to do things that show them that they can be successful and that there's other things out there than um, what's portrayed to them by, you know, a lot of their... Um, a lot of their role models in the community yeah. that they aren't you know, going down the right path. And so, you know, we give them that. So that's a need that we get to meet in the community is um, as long as the boys to have a safe place too, you know, and so somewhere where they can come where, you know, the walls are down, they can just have a good time, they get food, they get to have fun, interact with their friends. Um, and yeah, as simple as that. Kim, what has it been like for you seeing your dream come to pass and, and just <laughs> dealing with the kids? And I know uh, from knowing you, I know you're very hands-on with them. How's that been? It's, it's been amazing. I mean, and so much of it is, is just the little things that you wouldn't necessarily think are, you know, but, um, you know, just, I mean, the kids sitting around the table, for one. It, we had this huge dining room table built, and just every single week when they are sitting around that mm -hmm. table eating dinner, like my mm -hmm. heart just wants to explode, yeah. you know, because it's been a process for so long of, of picturing it and you know getting it all ready and then to just see them in there enjoying it laughing um, and, and speaking of eating meals uh, how can people sitting watching us today and both of y'all can chime in get involved in you know what 
we want to sponsor one Wednesday, we want to mm -hmm. sponsor two Wednesdays, food, because I know when you're talking food and boys, <laughs> the price can go really, 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 really high. So how can people or uh, get in touch with you guys and say, hey, I want to, I want to get, how can they call you first, mm -hmm. and then how can they get your website or Facebook or whatever you have? Mm -hmm. Um, so our, well, the, the best way to help with meals, so we have an amazing neighbor that has committed to cooking for our guys every Wednesday. Um, and so a lot of people ask if they can cook a meal. Um, so we don't need help with cooking because Richard is on it and he's amazing. Um, but we, we do need help, you know, we've had groups that will buy all the groceries for us or contribute, you know, HEB or Walmart or Sam's gift cards. Um, but the best way to reach out to us, um, our phone number is 214-454-7448. Okay. And then our email address is um, bridgeeasttemple at gmail.com. Okay. And Bridge East Temple is just the name of our overarching nonprofit organization. Gotcha. Um, what kind of, I know Michael touched on some of the things that you guys do, but what are some other opportunities that you guys offer to you that he may not have mentioned? Um, so we, um, we want to just let them, I mean, do life. So just, I mean, even little things like um, getting to go to a movie a couple weekends ago, you know, we all, we took a big group and, you know, just went to a movie together. Um, in a couple of weeks, we get to go to the UMHB football game, right. um, which is cool for them because some of the players have been coming to the house and hanging out with them. And so just that connection of yeah. not just a football game, but someone that they now know yeah. and is playing, um, just that connection. Um, and then like MC said, just bringing in, I mean, things that they're interested in. We, mm -hmm. we don't want to be about making you sit down and listen to a 10 minute lecture about, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. um, we think that learning can happen in more creative ways. I and, think that's good. Mm -hmm. yeah. And MC, this one's for you. What has been the response from the kids? I mean, yeah. how, how are they, fa you know, facial features? Are they enjoying it? What are kids mm -hmm. saying? Yeah, I, I think they, with their body language and the way I've been perceiving, they feel very safe um, and so, even we have new kids every week, like it's been growing. <laughs> and so like, it's crazy to see a kid who's never been there before. And there's kind of that, like they come in and they're not really sure. And then they like within, you know, an hour they're relaxed and they're just messing around having a good time. And so I think to them, it's just a safe place. I think it's um, something they look forward to. Um, you know, I, I ran into some of them in the community when they're like, hey, when are we going to 411 again? You know what I mean? Like they're ready and they're excited. They can't wait for Wednesdays. And so, um, it has been welcomed with open arms, so, yeah. What has your, been your favorite thing, this for both of y'all, mm -hmm. and start with you, Kim, ladies okay. first. What has <laughs> been your favorite thing about being involved with the 411 House? I mean, I just love that I get to see these kids. I mean, some of these kids I've known for five years or so, um, which is helpful because I've gotten to experience what it's like to know a kid when he's nine and then to know him again when he's 13, you know, wow. like just to <clears throat> see that. And so I think right now I have that perspective better than I ever have before of like, mm -hmm. this is just one part of his life, mm -hmm. but like, yeah. Lord willing, we're gonna get to be in it for a long time. Yeah, um, and just just knowing that it, it helps you just like, see the big picture with him. And also I just, love like middle <laughs> schoolers and high schoolers like yeah. I just think they're so fun I just yeah. love being around them yeah yeah Michael, I, I, yeah I would tell you, I would that last part I just like <laughs> being around them like it's just fun to be over there spending time with the boys um getting to invest in the next generation um and so like I'm, I'm only 25 so I'm really not <laughs> I'm not old <laughs> but it's still I still feel like I'm kind of staying young getting to hang out with them hear the words that they're saying and so like now I get to use like the cool lingo and like, <laughs> I know what I'm talking about. And so it's just really fun to get to hang out with them. And then it's also cool just to kind of like to to see that you're making an impact, you yeah. know. And so I don't I don't I'm probably not going to get to see the overall impact of what, you know, hanging out on a Wednesday looks like in their life. But it's cool to see the little things that yeah. um, that happen. So I yeah. think you all touched on a bunch of things. I think the scripture reminds us that uh, one person will got water, I mean, one person waters, one plants, but God gets the increase. And mm -hmm. I think over time, the kids are gonna see, cause you said something that's key with all kids is safe. 
safe. Once a kid feels safe, you're right, the walls do come down. Mm -hmm. But this question is a personal question for both of y'all. Mm -hmm. Kim, what, uh, what's it been like truly mm -hmm. for you, your husband, your kids to just be around this and see personally? Mm -hmm. Because sometimes we can get caught up in positive adaptation in, in the fact that we, the little things, mm -hmm. and now you're seeing the little things bring smile to people face. Mm -hmm. So what's that been like for you? Um, it's been, you know, there's, I'm not going to say it's always easy and fun and laughter. Mm -hmm. You know, I've visited ki kids in juvenile detention. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my kids are nine and seven and they have, you know, personally known a kid that has been in juvenile detention and they know what that is and they know what that means. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, so I think that it's been, I love just what it's been for my kids. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, that side of it, because you know, this is life, like I want them to know these things. Mm -hmm. um, but then also, you know, like they're friends with a lot of these kids and, you know, joke so around with them. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that, you know, I know there's, um, like I think that our family has benefited more from knowing wow. these kids and families mm -hmm. than they have from us. That's good. Um, yeah. MC. Uh, I think for me, it's been, uh, it's been a challenge and it's pushed me out of my comfort zone. Um, I think I relate with a lot of the kids. Um, I have an athlete background, and so a lot of them are athletes um, or appreciate sports, and so I relate on that aspect. Um, and then also I relate like racially with a lot of our kids. Um, but from um, a life experience standpoint, I don't. And so you know, the life experiences that some of our kids you know that are having at nine and ten years old aren't experiences that I had growing up. And so it's been a challenge for me to be able to relate with them on that mm -hmm. standpoint when like we grew up a lot differently, you know. Um, and so. That has definitely pushed me out of my comfort zone. You know, we have kids who, you know, sometimes they don't know when their next meal is coming from. You know, mm -hmm. and so for me, um, that's not an experience that I had. And so, you know, learning to be empathetic and to and to relate with them um, has definitely been a challenge. And then even just from a cultural standpoint, you know, just the way they interact with each other and the way they interact with their families and the things that are important to them yeah. um, are just different than um, yeah. <laughs> than how I grew up. And so. Um, it's not a bad thing, it's a great thing, and I love it because it's made me a better person and allowed me to see um, a different aspect of life that I think a lot of people don't get to see. That's and, good. And a lot of people develop misconceptions about lifestyles and cultures because of that. And I'm so really I, I'm thankful that I don't have yeah. to have that. Uh, you will get stories when kids get out of school, get out of college, that this place saved their lives. Mm -hmm. So just, just know that. My Angelo say, people forget what you do, forget what you say, but they never forget how you make them feel. Mm -hmm. I and I think that. you guys are making a difference. Kim, I want to take this time to say thank you for being on the show. Thank you for what you do. Such a sweet spirit and nothing but love for you. Same for you, MC. Thank you guys for being on the show. Yep. Thanks, for Thanks. Thanks for having us. Thank you, our viewers, for tuning in to Attention Central Texas.